Hello and welcome to another episode of The Re-Up. My name is Jason Delgado. We're back at it again, out here, stuck in the house. Yeah, doing our best to try and get through these tumultuous times without a car. So I've been home a lot, doing a lot of at-home watching, viewing of content, and it's been good. I've been seeing a lot of really good stuff, so it's here to talk about now. Anyway, welcome. This is the re-up every week. I come at you with things that have happened. Usually it's adventures of comedy on the road, telling jokes, not getting laughs, getting laughs. But uh, but now it's not. Now it's home watching TV and thinking. <laughs> but uh, little by little, I'm hoping to get back on the road to uh, start doing things, uh, you know, live again. Just it sucks because I have to go local and... Anyway, enough complaining. Life is good. God bless us all, or whoever bless us all. <laughs> but in any case, lots of fun things have been happening. I'm, uh, I've been watching a lot of good stuff. We'll kind of kick it off with, I have uh, a huge pension for cooking, as you know, if you've been watching the channel. I made a little video regarding seafood pasta elegante. Yeah, it was very, very fun to make that just because uh, I want to make like a seafood pasta and then, you know, can we make content out of it, put the video together and it came out good. So I could, I feel good like showing it to people be like, no, try it, cuckles. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun to cook and to make the video and since sort of that cooking vibe, you know, looking up how to do stuff, recipes, baking and such, I got into the show Julia. Julia, which is about Julia Child, the famous chef. Uh, I don't know if people even know her nowadays as far as a chef, just because it was a long, long time ago. But um, yeah, she wrote a cookbook and she, uh, you know, brought it out in America and it was just about French cuisine. And then they gave her a show on PBS and she became a huge star. I remember as a child watching Julia Child. And, uh, and yeah, she was great. She had the funny voice and the hunchback. She put butter in everything. She was fun. She had charm, you know. And so this show was kind of about her. And it was really, really, it, one of the things that I felt was the most important about it was it was fun. Like, above all, it, was in, it wasn't, like, informative. It wasn't about, like, how to cook or, like, <laughs> you know, this is how you should do things or, like, the struggle of a burger burger. It really was more just about the power fantasy of... You know, she's an older woman, so, you know, sometimes you can get started late in life or get a second start late in life. And I thought that was kind of the main thrust of the story, which was fun because it was kind of like a power fantasy, especially for me. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you see, like, she started late in life and then, you know, she made this cookbook, you know, I think in her late 30s or 40s. And then she started the show when she was 40 something. And then she became a huge star late and, uh, and you know, brought a lot of joy into people's lives. Like cooking, I guess, wasn't a big thing, like French cuisine and kind of cooking shows and stuff. And now that's everything. I mean, I made one. <laughs> so it was a really good show. And I thought that it expressed that more than like, here's the Julia Child you didn't know. Like, I don't want to know that. I'd rather just have a fun cooking show. And that's what it was. And it provided that fun sort of like, you could start late in life and still be okay. And I was like, that's kind of cool. I dig that. So I would recommend Julia... I'm gonna say on HBO Max. I think it's HBO Max, but yes. Julia, highly recommend it on HBO Max. I've only seen episode one, but I will see others just because, again, that fun, sparky, power fantasy, you can do it type attitude thing, I think is really cool. Um, the other thing that I saw that uh, was supposed to be funny, no, it, it was very funny, um, but sort of turned out to be more introspective, but something that I've been thinking about a lot and kind of can't get over is Roth Annual. I believe that's how you pronounce, pronounce it, <laughs> Roth Annual, um, which is the new Gerard Carmichael comedy special. And it's really, really great. I mean, I just love sort of, in, in any way, if you don't know Gerard Carmichael as a comedian, he did a couple specials. His humor, you know, it's just kind of a slow, dry. I think it's funny, but sometimes it does kind of feel a little long for me. Sometimes it gets into sort of political issues, which, again, in my comedy, I kind of try to just steer away from. But this was more personal. It was about him, about, you know, his family. I don't want to kind of spoil anything. It's out kind of in the news that he comes out as gay on the special. And just the way that he sort of goes about it is like, yeah, man, me too. Like, I can't believe it either. Like, that idea of how his family sees him and they distance themselves and how his relationships with his friends change and how he's honest and raw about it. And it was one of those, 
It was honest, it was uncomfortable, and it was really funny. In that order. <laughs> I feel like there was so much humor in it. And it would had such great bits of, of, of sort of like, where it, it teetered that line of sad and funny. I had a friend mention how they thought it was more of a one-man show than a stand-up comedy. And I have to agree. It was kind of more of a one-man show. Just because, you know, the audience got participated in you know, he, was, he wasn't even standing up. He was sitting down the whole time. You know, you had Richard Pryor, red shirt on. You know, and then the raw had, you know, the red. I think, like, red is sort of like that. I'm, I'm sort of bleeding on stage. I thought it was beautiful with the blue lighting directed by Bo Burnham. Just terrific. I really, really loved it. Can't stop thinking about it. I thought it just, it just went a little long in the tooth for me. I thought, like, there were parts that were raw that were just him kind of thinking on stage. And, and, and it was supposed to give you the sense maybe of being there and how raw it was. But I felt like in the in the sort of the context of a packaged special, you can still show long moments of silence and make it uncomfortable and, and still pop us with the funny. But I think there was very, very little editing. I think we're just plain, just looking at the at the shots and just putting it together. And, and I loved how they shot him walking up to the place, just getting up on stage and then doing his bit and then walking off and going home. And I just, I, I loved how it was shot and, and the, the beauty and the time it took. Uh, I did just think it went a little long in the tooth for me at the end, um, but I liked how raw it was and I loved how honest it was. And it was very, very funny uh, and uh, very clever. And it's uh, sort of a lot of the things it talked about. But um, yeah, Rothaniel, uh Gerard Carmichael. I highly recommend it. It is, uh, I, I would say, a bit acquired, but I think that, I think it's good. You know, if you're late night kind of watching, it's not really a ha-ha-ha comedy, which is why it's tough to just say, run, don't walk, you know. But I uh, but I really enjoyed it. I really, really thought it was, uh, it was impactful. I think about it, so I would recommend it. But, uh, but yeah, it's been fun. I'm feeling still very good and blessed just to be able to cook shrimp pastas and show it to everybody. And, uh, you know, still kind of make these little videos and have fun. So I hope you enjoyed watching it. This has been a lot of fun doing. My name is Jason Delgado. This has been the re-up. Uh, this has been so much great. As always, we will see you on the next one.